well. Welcome, everyone, and happy Halloween <laughs> here at Gargoyle Manor, the Monster Museum. Also, it is our 10th season finale. That's right, dear folks. It's been a whole year, right, Boris? <laughs> I mean, wow, I imagine a whole year th that so many things we've gone through. But tonight, tonight we're celebrating not only only our 10th season finale, but Halloween, when all the goblins and ghouls, spooks, vampires, and witches, and monsters galore come creeping to your door, going trick-or-treat. We want more, more, more. <laughs> ah, tonight's feature, dear fiends, is a humdinger, if I say so, to take the season out with. It's called Devils of Darkness. Now, this uh, particular film, you may, don't uh, judge it by its, uh, by its cover name. Mm, no, 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 no. This has a little bit of everything for the season. It has uh, satanic witches. It has vampires, satanic vampires. It has cults and covens and gypsies and oh just it keeps going on and on and on i mean after all it's the season to get in touch with the dead the other side ray boris <laughs> and in, in that vein let's see if we can't get a hold of a few fiends of our own hmm? <laughs> well, dear fiends, it seems that we have a few stragglers along the way can't decide whether they want to come to the party or not. Well, don't you worry. We're all here. You and I and Boris and all of my good fiends that uh, showed up along that show that's going to show up along the way. I hope <laughs> we most certainly do. Don't we, Boris? We've got the place all spruced up. So let us go now into the old Internet Haunted TV to wrap up this this year's season finales, Film Devils in the Darkness, or Darkness, Darkness of Devils, Devils in the Darkness. Either way, it's about devils and it's about darkness, vampires. You'll see, you'll love it, you'll love it. <laughs> Let's tune in right now. Hands off, I'm coming for you. <laughs> I'll come and get you. Let me out! Let me out! <laughs> and now a special message for Bobby Gamonster and Boris the Buzzard from Drac and Countess Corita. Hi, Drac and Countess Corita here. With Dracito and Fluffy. And we just want to congratulate our good friend, Bobby Game Monster and Boris the Buzzard. Yes, for their 10th season finale of the Monster Movie Night. That's right. 10 years. Congratulations. And boy, if this is their finale, you know what that means. That means we should also say, Happy, Happy Halloween! Halloween. <laughs> All right, good. You know what I think we should do? I think we should trick Bobby. Oh, Bobby's so nice. I think we should treat him. No, we should trick him. Treat. Trick. Treat. Trick. Treat. Trick. Treat. What do you think, gang? Trick, trick or treat? Oh, Corita. Oh, look what your cat's doing. He's Oh, he's oh, coughing up another furball there. Oh, Jesus. Count Sinistre, born fifteen eighty eight, condemned for his infamous and barbaric crimes to be buried alive. Because thine eye 
be evil. Thy whole body be full of darkness. of Mistress Peace Theater, and I just wanted to congratulate you on your 160th, 116th seasons of Monster Movie Night. You and Boris deserve every honor that is coming to you, and I just wanted to let you know that I personally know that I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy at all. But anyways, congratulations and happy Halloween.
awaken. Rise from your sleep. Feel its power drawing you to me. No force on earth or in heaven can destroy the symbol that is sinistre. This talisman that sets me above everyone. Come. You are my chosen bride. You will follow me to the end of time. You should not have given him a room, Bouvier. This terrible storm last night. The road was impossible. I could not refuse to give them shelter. I shall feel happier when he is gone. What about Mademoiselle Brown? Oh, she is leaving this evening. Now, please, will you excuse me? I have work to do. Hello, this is Don O'Malley with Don's Breakfast Cereal Show. Thanks for tuning in. Oh, wait a minute. Mail call. This is from Bobby, Grandmaster, and Boris the Buzzard. Make sure you tune into their show on the Monster Channel, EerieLateNight.com. The Monster Movie Nights on the Monster Channel. Ten years in the making, going into their left. Get away. An animated tin can. Get away. Make sure you join us in their show. Ten years. Hope to see you keep going with it. You're an inspiration to all of us. Thanks again for tuning. I told you to back away. Put it down. 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 Down, boy. Down. Down. Let me shoot you anyways. Thanks again, Bobby and Boris. And say hello to Melissa for us here at Don's Breakfast Cereal Show. Thank you again. Good night. Well, get the car fixed, okay? Yeah, it goes like a bomb. You missed a good lunch. What's all this? We're going to excavate some caves, back of the village. Well, they're quite something, according to Madeline. Oh, Keith, drop these in the post box, will you? Every place we stop, postcards. Those happen to be the ones you didn't post in my thing. Touché. Oh. Excuse me. Dave! Well, the car sounded a little healthier. Yes, but it took them long enough. About time. Day's half over. Where have you been? Ate too much. And Keith, be careful. Come on now. Stop playing, little mother. See what happens when you bring big sister away with you? Now, stop worrying. Bye, now. See you. Bye. Monsieur Bexler. Pardon. But uh, what time will you be leaving? Why, you want to get rid of me? Oh, no, 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 Monsieur Cosnar. Haven't had time to look around yet. Probably tomorrow. Merci, Monsieur. Hi there. Hi, Madeline. Finish the packing. Almost. Just had to come up for air. What a bore. I'm exhausted. Do I need reviving? Can I get you a drink? Oh, it's the best offer I've had today. I sent for the waiter, monsieur. I will be on the terrace. Oh. Stop 
my collector just mounts up. Well, travel light. That's my motto. I agree. The climbing tackle the boys carry around weighs a ton. <laughs> yes, how about these caves here, Madeline? You seen them? Oh, darling, can you see me crawling around on all fours underground? <laughs> Give me peace and quiet. Yeah, you certainly get it here. The place could do with a bit of livening up from what I've seen of it. And spoil my favorite hideaway. That's right. We don't want hordes of trippers tearing the place apart. It's a ghastly thought. Good. I'd like a vodka. Double. Neat. Cognac for me, please. And a scotch and soda. Hmm? Does that character ever talk? <laughs> Doesn't like strangers, darling. They were a bit offhand in the village, too. Oh, it takes time to know them. Tomorrow, London. Oh, it's a pity I have to go. Tonight of all nights. Still, business calls. Why? What's so special about tonight? It's All Souls' Eve. It's a big religious ceremony. Oh, you must see it. What happens? You'll see, but I promise you it's really something. Well, I hope the boys will be back in time. They hate to miss out on anything. Hello, darlings. It is I, housewife of whore, here with... Mr. of horror. <laughs> and Mr. of horror and I would like to wish Bobby Gammonster a very well, happy... And, and Boris. Oh, Don't my goodness. Boris, of course, Boris. Oh, goodness. Boris and Bobby, a very happy 10th anniversary. And a happy Halloween. Yes. Hmm. Well, it should be a quiet Halloween here at this house. Yes, hopefully we won't have too many of the neighborhood children banging down our door, begging for candy. They should be. No, they should all be at home. Watching Bobby Gear Monster. Exactly. Well, Bobby, <laughs> Boris, happy Halloween, happy 10th anniversary, and cheers to the next one. 11. Yes, and then 12. I think we all know how this works. And then 13 and beyond. So far beyond. I tell you, and what a marvelous setting for a story. Eh? Especially what comes later. Oh, what happens? They go down to the graveyard, the ritual. Oh, you must see it for yourself, Paul. The atmosphere alone, it'd make a marvelous horror. You know, ghouls and witches. <laughs> Don't let your imagination run away with you. It's really rather touching. They place candles on the graves of their dear departed. And they also keep one burning in the windows of homes. It's to light the way for returning lost souls who uh, supposedly rise up on all souls' eve. Oh, you must see it. Hey, you want to go? I'd love to. All right, I'll get my coat. Well, oh, bring mine too, will you? That'll be my taxi. Well, I guess this is it. Oh, sorry, it's hello and goodbye, and we're all getting to know each other too. Still, do give me a ring when you get back. Won't I you? will. Paul, you've got my number. Now, don't forget to call me. Right. And say goodbye to the boys for me. Right. You cold? <laughs> it's nothing. Someone walking over your grave. That's what they say, isn't it? <laughs> Bye now. <laughs> Mustache! Bye. Bye. Are you ready? All set. Let's go.
Let's go any further. Why? What's wrong? Oh, come on. Let's go back. No, no, no. no just a second. I want to see what's going on down there. I don't. Oh! Oh! Hey, what is this? Go back. Go no further. Let their souls rest in peace. It is too late. The black death is upon you. The evil eye. Hey, what is this nonsense? Nothing can protect you from the evil one and those that follow him. Take me away, Paul. Don't let us scare you. Oh, please, let's go. <laughs> it is too late. Sinistra, the devil of darkness. Someone close to you, a loved one. The black death has struck. Paul, Keith. Come on. These are the risks they take if they had asked my permission to go there. You would have refused? Most well, certainly. Such careless young people. It is very dangerous. Then why isn't it cordoned off? Or some warning there? Would that have stopped them? The people in the village do not go there. They know better. What about the other boy, Dave? He's still down there. Monsieur, the gentleman explained there has been a fall of rock. It is impossible that he could be alive. So you're going to do nothing? But we have done what we could. We cannot do more. Now, the boy's sister, will you see that she comes to my office tomorrow? There are some um, papers to sign, some formalities, you understand. Inspector, the doctor... The doctor has made his report. I'll give it to the lady tomorrow. I suggest you return to the inn, monsieur. There will be no trouble, I think. Come on, my dear, you must not be alone. If only I could do something to lessen your grief. It's just that it happened just like she said. A warning. A warning? A gypsy. <laughs> that is nonsense. You cannot she believe it. She saw it. The mark of the Black Death. She talked to the, the evil one and his followers. Oh, I know it sounds My dear, you must forget such tales. Gypsies exist on such legends, make-believe. But what she said happened. You cannot connect such talk to the tragedy. It was a coincidence. Tragic, but... My only regret is that we were unable to do more. We heard him cry out, but by the time yes, we I got know. there... And... I know. Oh, please, let me help you erase this unhappy memory. Uh, how's Miss Forrest? Is she all right? I don't know. She's not here. What do you mean? Well, I left her for just a minute, but when I returned, she'd gone. Well, perhaps she's gone up to her room. 
Of course. I told her she must try and rest. I'll just check, see if she's all right. Perhaps the night air will make you sleep. So quiet. So deathly quiet. But so peaceful. There's something strange about this place. I feel it. There's a... There's a fragrance, a sickly fragrance that reminds me of death. My father, when he died, the room where he lay, it's like that. You must try and forget such unhappy memories. I suddenly turn cold. My hands are like ice. Oh. oh. Maybe we should go back. In a moment. Hmm? Bonjour, Bouvier. Ah, bonjour, Monsieur Inspector. It looks like being a fine day. Yes, a very fine day indeed. I believe Monsieur Baxter expects me. I will tell him. Would you like some café, perhaps? Café noir ou café crème? Ah, ah, ah. An excellent idea, Bouvier. Café noir, s'il vous plaît. Oui. Ah, bonjour, Monsieur. I understand you wish to see me. Good morning. Look, Inspector. Shall we... Uh... I'd like to go over once more what happened. Oh, all in good time, please. I prefer you to sit. First, we shall have some coffee. Please, Inspector, let's not waste time. <laughs> it is so strange. You Anglo-Saxons, you have the reputation of being so unemotional, so calm. And we Frenchmen, oh, we are supposed to be all uh, boof, boof, boof. But it is not so. A girl has disappeared. How do you expect me to behave? Come now, we must discuss this calmly and with reason. I am trying to be calm, but she's disappeared. I am aware of that. We have not been idle. My men are still looking. All night they have been searching. Soon? Thank you, Bouvier. You would like to join me? No, thank you. Look, is there something I can do? Ah, excellent the croissant. Fresh and hot. Are you quite sure? Thank you, Bouvier. Please, monsieur. So you say you heard a scream? Yes. Are you certain? Well, it sounded like a scream. <laughs> it sounded like a scream. <laughs> so you could have been mistaken. It's possible. I understand you are a writer, monsieur. Yes. What do you write, fact or fiction? So what are you suggesting, that I imagined all this? There was a gentleman and his wife. Perhaps she left with them. Inspector, her clothes are still in her room. Yes. I see. Now, Miss Forrest, she was very upset over her brother's death. Well, naturally. It was a terrible shock. Mm. What are you getting at? Hello? It is for you, Monsieur Inspector. Thank you. If you will excuse me. Hello? 
This is Inspector Malin speaking. Ah, I see. Miss Forrest, I see. Please, attend to it. I shall come over immediately. Monsieur, her body was discovered in the lake. It seems she took her own life. I don't believe it. Please, I must go. Well, I'll go with you. No, you will not. But she was an old friend. I insist. I insist that you stay here, monsieur. This is a police matter. Look, Inspector. You will hear from me later when I have concluded my report. Bonjour, monsieur. I'm so sorry, monsieur. Apologies, monsieur. I did not wish to wake you, but uh, there is someone to see you. I know it is late, but... Uh, I'll come right down. You bet, uh, monsieur. I will attend to it. for calling on you at this late hour. But I had to come and offer my condolences. My wife, too. Oh, she's so upset. If only she had not left her. Oh, please, she's nowhere to blame. If there is anything I can do, you have only to ask. Well, these people, this village. Village? What do you mean? I don't understand, monsieur. Well, there's something they're afraid of. Oh, monsieur, it's your imagination. You saw them at the cave. They all ran away. Monsieur, you are intelligent men. These are simple peasants. The superstition? The celebration last night? One mustn't take it seriously, monsieur. Yeah, but the gypsy. Would you listen to such foolishness in your own country? Oh, I can understand how you must feel, but... Come now. I tell you, there is something wrong, and I'm going to prove it. Who? What can you do, monsieur? Get a second medical opinion, for one thing. I'm having the bodies flown back to England. I shall insist on a post-mortem. But that is nonsense, monsieur. Maybe. But I just have this feeling, and I've got to be sure. There's also something else. Something else? You were about to say... This is a very beautiful piece of work. And please be careful. Oh, I'm sorry. Just a foolish toy, monsieur. A toy? I might have killed you. I doubt it. But you were about to tell me something. A crest. Oh, it is of no significance. Just an antique. You have seen this before? No, no, no. I was just interested, that's all. Look, if you'll excuse me, I have to be up early. I'm leaving the first thing in the morning for England, so goodbye, monsieur. Oh, not goodbye. I have the feeling we shall meet again. Yes, perhaps. I'm sure of it. But next time, under happier circumstances, Summon you and others who follow. Both 
near and afar to pledge allegiance to the devil of darkness. We, we follow, O oh master. We, we are your slaves. We, we obey, obey without question. Then, who were chosen to submit to servitude must be cast out. A stranger who threatens to expose us must be struck down. We will go in their place. The talisman, the all-powerful symbol that protects us, must be restored. My lords in East, master, take mine, I beg you. You, who defy the sacred symbol, must perish. <laughs> well, hello there, Bobby Gummonster, Dr. Paul Barry here, and I just wanted to take this opportunity to congratulate you on your 10th anniversary of Monster Movie Night. I don't get it. You've been so successful. I'm trying to figure out how I can be as successful as you. Hmm. Maybe it's Boris, your sidekick, which gives me an idea. <coughs> Bobby, I figured it out. I need my very own sidekick too. So, look what I just made. I would like for you to meet Bordas. Well, what do you think? He's handmade. <laughs> How are you, Bordas? Hmm. Well, what do you mean? What's the matter? I'm bored. Oh yeah? Well, why are you bored? I don't know what to be for Halloween. Oh, what did I tell you earlier? Oh, that's right. I'm going to be a keyboard. Oops. Anyway, again, congratulations on your 10 year anniversary and uh, <laughs> I now know your secret. <laughs> I tell you, Madeline, I'm just not satisfied. Paul, I know how you feel, but what good will it do? It'll prove I'm right for one thing. It's the doctor's report. Surely that's enough. It isn't enough for me. But if the autopsy proves you're wrong... Okay, then I made a lot of fuss over nothing. And what about Anne's family? Haven't you considered their feelings? Oh, family. An uncle in Canada she hasn't seen for years. Well, if you insist on going through with it... Well, I have to, for my own peace of mind. Well, you know best. And believe me, Madeline, I hope I am wrong. And I'm sorry I blew up like that. Oh, that's all right. I understand. Oh, and call me as soon as you have any news. Bye, Oh, Doctor, Mr. Baxter to see you. Oh, welcome to the zoo. Hi, Bob. Sorry I had to drag you down here all this way. You sounded pretty worried on the phone. Uh, confused is more like it. What's it all about? You don't mind, do you? I'm up to my eyes. Uh, you carry on. Sorry to disturb you, but I had to talk to someone. Okay, talk. Bob, you must have come up against some weird superstitions in your travels. 
Many times. Now, I don't mean amongst primitive jungle tribes. Oh, look now, you don't have to wear a loincloth or beat a tom-tom to be primitive. Or, for that matter, superstitious. Do you walk under ladders? No. Superstition? Maybe superstition's the wrong word. What about supernatural? Well, like they say, there are more things in heaven and earth, etc., etc. Scientists have only scratched the surface of the extraterrestrial. We have to rely on psychology rather than on the so-called material proof. Now, take witchcraft. Everyone knows that one out with the Middle Ages. Oh, you think so? Do you know when the last witchcraft trial took place? 1926, France. There was another case in New York a few years ago. A man hired a character who supposedly had the evil eye. His job was to frighten the men working under him. <laughs> oh, I know, it sounds crazy, but it's absolutely true. Take my work here. Snake venom and its effect on animals. Poison to cure human beings. If I was in the jungle, I'd be a witch doctor, right? Well, how about those coffins? They couldn't just vanish. So, somebody took them. And at a rough guess, I'd say that somebody didn't want you to have those bodies examined. Yeah, that's what I think. If there's another reason, I'd be very glad to hear it. What made you suspicious in the first place? A gypsy. She predicted it. <laughs> Crystal Gazy, I know nothing about. You haven't much to go on, have you? No. Can you see the police being interested in black death and evil eye talk? They'd have me certified. Hey, what about that medallion you mentioned? Have you got it? Yeah. Of course, there may be no connection. You should have handed it over, you know. I just thought it might be tied up somehow. Well, you could be right. There's your evil eye. Yeah? Snake or serpent, whatever it is. Come over here. That's how he catches his victim. He hypnotizes it. Freezes it with a look so that it can't move. Then he makes his strike. Here we have the bat effigy. In many countries, they are said to have occult power. What, those things? Uh -huh. They look harmless enough. They do carry rabies, you know. <laughs> oh, not that lot, don't worry. What do you think, Bob? You think there may be something in all this? Well, you want something more concrete before you go to the police. Is there, uh, is there nobody else that can help? Somebody that knows the village, perhaps? There's Madeline Braun. She's been there a couple of times on holiday. Well, what are you waiting for, man? Get on to her. Dr. Dredd, refuse. Not really. Ah. Hey! Hi there. This is your old friend, Dr. Dredd. And I'm with Paltrow, and Hugo, and Baby and Charlie. And we just want to congratulate Bobby the Monster on his 10th, 10th. Two of those season and wishing you all a happy Halloween. Have fun. Get candy. Smash some pumpkins. The bat effigy. In many countries, they are said to have occult power. What, those things? Uh -huh. They look harmless enough. They do carry rabies, you know. <laughs> oh, not that lot. Don't worry. What do you think, Bob? You think there may be something in all this? Well, you want something more concrete before you go to the police. Is there, uh, is there nobody else that can help? Somebody that knows the village, perhaps? There's Madeline Braun. She's been there a couple of times on holiday. Well, what are you waiting for, man? Get on to her. Madeline, do you mean to tell me that people are actually going to buy these? I mean, look at this one. You'd be surprised, darling. I know my American tourists. They must be out of their tiny minds. Put it there, darling. Oh. Hello, the odd spot. Hello. Pa! Hey, Madeline, where do you want these? Oh, hold on a minute, will you? Oh, darling, Karen, be an angel and give Derek a hand. I'm sorry, of course. Put it in the back there, darling. Sorry, Paul. Yes, I read about it. I called you last night. Oh, darling, I hate to be a bore, but, well, I'm madly busy at the moment. Could it wait? Well, I want to talk to you about that village we stayed at in Brittany. 
Yes, but you know the place. I thought you might be able to tell me something. Well, anything. No, 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 no. It's nothing to do with the police. I talked it over with a friend of mine who does research at Rayburn's lab. He thinks I may be onto something. Oh, darling. I do think you're becoming a little, well, obsessed with all this. But if you think I could help... Look, why don't you come over this evening? About, uh, 9.30? Right. Fine. Thanks, Madeline. Hello, oh, Mr. Baxter. Yes? Good morning. I'm uh, Inspector Hardwick, Scotland Yard. I wonder if I could have a word with you. Yes, well, you better come in then. Thank you. Scotland Yard, eh? And you never mentioned the autopsy? Oh, what's the point? I've nothing to go on except a hunch. They said it was just a routine call. They have no idea how or why the coffins vanished. I've had quite a day. I've been doing a little research. I spent the afternoon at the British Museum. If you ever get bored, I can recommend the North Library. <laughs> What'd you find out? There we are. A talisman. Your medallion. A talisman, an object which is said to possess a supernatural power. See ceremonial magic, otherwise the art of dealing with spirits. In a word, necromancy or sorcery. The raising of the souls from another world. All souls, Eve. By the way, do you know why a bridegroom carries his bride across the threshold? No. The door was where the devil or those of the evil eye were said to congregate. Just a little something I thought you might like to know. Now then, where was I? Yes. Witchcraft. Black magic? Well, now, that's not a criminal offense since uh, 1736. But last year, there was a lot of publicity in England about uh, some mysterious rituals, grave openings, bodies being removed. However, it's all there. I hope you can sort it out with the help of Madeline. Yeah, I almost forgot. Better be getting over there. Well, thanks again for doing the spade work. Quite an eye-opener in an evil sort of way. Back to the Bunsen burner. Bye, Bob. So long, Paul. It most certainly is, my little ghoulie. It most certainly is scary. <laughs> and especially, especially for a night like this, the haunted of all nights. It's our monster time of year. You know, it's our new year. It's our festival. It's, it's our last harvest. It's Samhain. It's Halloween. It's also our season 10 season finale. And you know, looking back over this past year, Boris and I have quite a lot of um, wonderful things to look back on, such as, well, our honorable mention award winning of the Rondo Hatton Favorite Horror Host Awards. Uh, we did do that. We got that. We're also nominated for next year's 2020 Official Horror Host Hall of Fame. Uh, we, we had that going on. Mm, let's see. So many other things that um, that that's just what we've had. So many other the hosts on our show. We had Mistress Malicious for the first time. We had Dr. Sarcophagi in an animated uh, role of his that he's just come out with for the first time. We've had oh, other uh, other 
wonderful hosts along the way. We our two hundredth episode was back in March of 2019. Uh, we had a wonderful time uh, doing that. Uh, we even went on a train ride. And if you missed that out, well, you go back to the um, the archives and look at past episodes under season 10, and you'll see the 200th episode that I'm talking about. Have a rewatch or a watch for the first time. There's been just so many things that uh, we're, we've been thankful and uh, happy about. Right, Boris? <laughs> And so many things to look forward to for the next year, for the next season, number 11. Mm-hmm. Whoa. And anyway, let's let's see if we can't conjure up a few more people on the Ouija here. And hello, hello, hello. I'm here. You're here? Okay, great. You're listening? Okay, great, great, great. Whoa, okay, you're right. Well, well, let's, they're, they're ready to go back to the show. Devils in the Darkness. Or, yes. And what a film it is. My ghoulies. <laughs> let's go back to it now. Hey, Papal Bear here. We want to wish you a congratulations for your season 10 finale. And happy Halloween for us here in Cincinnati, Ohio. <laughs> Darling, names are such a bore to remember. Derek, just grab yourself a drink, dear, and then put yourself about. Okay. Hi, Karen. Hello, Derek. Oh, very dolly. Down, boy. Go on, darling. Mix and mingle. What will it be? Uh, vodka. Uh, with it? With it? I'll say she is. Welcome. The elephant's graveyard, my dear. About time some of these were put out to pasture. Hmm? Well... A model, eh? How old is she? It's difficult to tell in those glasses. No, oh, just turned 20. Must have been a U-turn. Now, now, darling. No need to be bitchy. Oh, sweet! Oh, darling, they just descended. Oh, you know how it is. Now, I did phone you, but there was no answer. Oh, come on now. Relax. It'll do you good. We'll have a little talk another time tomorrow. I don't think I should. I won't hear of you rushing off like that. Karen! Karen! I want you to meet Paul. Dear little darling, look after him. He needs cheering up. Hello. Go on, you two. Have fun. Colonel, come along. Well, you heard the lady. Yes, I heard it. I think a drink to start off with. You look as though you could do with one. Yeah, I could do with more than one. So who's counting? second Canadian club. Anyway, you're feeling better. I can see that. I'm surprised you can see anything in those. Why all this mystery bit? Oh, just part of the image. Yeah, well, I can't bear talking to anyone wearing dark glasses. Mind if I destroy the image a little? Don't be too distracted. Yes, that's better. Same goes for you. Now you're in focus. Yeah. How about you live alone, like it, and then show business, right? I live alone, loathe it, and I'm a model. Off and on. And when you're off? Oh, you name it and I've done it. Right now I'm working for Madeline. You and antiques? Oh, well, makes for contacts. An artist came in the other day looking for a model, so... So you're on again, huh? Looks like it. He's supposed to be here this evening. 
coming to talk business. Best of luck. Thank you. I might need it. I can't figure him out. Or myself either, for that matter. Still, it's a job. But, um, uh, what are you doing after it's fixed? Go oh, back to my one-roomed fire trap, I suppose. Does it have a phone? Cromwell, 2400. You get a better idea. You get hungry, I know a place with the scrambled eggs and gravy. I never eat breakfast. Still, if it's as good as you say, it may be. I cook in a non-stick frying pan. <laughs> well, eggs make a change from etchings. Now, now, Paul. Mustn't monopolize. Come on, Karen, darling. Circulate. Well, you heard the lady. I heard. I think this is where I came in. Well, I'll see you later, then. I can't wait to see your kitchen. Look, uh, say goodbye to all my friends. OK. Ah, Karen, my sweetheart. Oh, be a darling, get me a drink, will you? I have to see a man about an address. Creeps and Cretans, I'm Master Seth. And I'm Mistress Dandelion. You might recognize us from our little show called Movies from the Madhouse. Uh, tonight we, is a very special night. We would like to wish a very happy 10th anniversary to one of the greats, Bobby Gamonster. And Boris T. Buzzard. They've been doing this for 10 years. They've been doing a great job at it for 10 years. And here's hoping for 10 more. So from all of us here at the Madhouse, happy anniversary. And happy Halloween. Good morning, Inspector. Sergeant. Morning. Well, you're having quite a time of it, one way or another, eh? All this for nothing? As I told the constable last night, nothing was missing. Yeah. What's over there? Bedroom. Well, have a look at it, will you, Sergeant? What about windows? All locked. Front door? Uh, that was open when I came home. What time is that? Oh, about 2.30. I'd been to a party. What time did you go there? About 10. Did you notice anybody hanging around outside when you left the flat? No, 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 but I was in a hurry. I just came home for a minute and then popped out again. You were in a hurry, eh? <laughs> You're not suggesting that I... Did you didn't close it? Well, it has happened. I've done it myself before now. But that doesn't explain why they went to so much trouble for nothing. You haven't been plagued by anonymous phone calls or such like. Regarding what? Well, practical jokers. We've had a spate of them just lately, getting us out on wild goose chases. False fire alarms, phony robberies, coffins disappearing. Uh, that was no practical joke, Inspector. 
Yeah, pretty bad taste, if it was. Anything been reported? No, nothing so far. Nothing back there, sir. Windows and door okay. Look, Mr. Baxter, if, as you say, nothing was stolen, is there anything they may have been after? No, nothing. Are you quite sure? Oh, why should I keep anything back? Oh, you'd be surprised how reluctant some people are to give us the full facts. I think they like to make us earn our pay. We get the complete run around sometimes. And who knows? Some of them probably do have something to hide. Well, look, Inspector, I've told you everything I know. Yes, yes, I'm quite sure you have. Still, uh, if you do happen to remember any little thing that might give us a lead. Oh, yes, and uh, there is one other thing, Mr. Baxter. I understand you know uh, Dr. Kelsey. Dr. Kelsey? Yes, I was with him last night. That's right. Your name was in his diary. You saw him before you went to the party? What's all this about, Inspector? Mr. Baxter, what time did you leave Dr. Kelsey? About 9.30. I see. That's about the time of his death. He's dead? Oh, didn't you know? They found him this morning. It was on the radio. What happened? Oh, uh, an accident. A poisonous snake had escaped. The doctor was bitten. He was also rather badly crushed. A heavy cage fell on him. I'm sorry to uh, break this to you so suddenly, Mr. Baxter. Bad luck seems to be following you around, doesn't it? Well, you'll be hearing from us. Oh, and I'd, uh, I'd like to hear from you if you do happen to remember anything that might help us. Any little thing. Yes. Yes. Oh, Inspector. Yes? Well, thank you again. Magic and the supernatural. A treasury of witchcraft. Schizophrenia. And the Encyclopedia of Witchcraft and Demonology. That's four to go on with our check on the others. Well, this will keep you busy for a while, thanks. Hey, mister. Come here. Closer. Closer. Mm, not that damn close. Happy 10th anniversary. You. Thank you, my dear, but no, I would much prefer if we could continue. Okay, do you mind if I slip across the pub for a moment or two? Mm -hmm. I shall be here. You sure there's nothing I can get you? Nothing, thank you. How's it going? Please? You are a perfect subject, my dear. I only hope I can do you justice. Oh, have I interrupted? Oh, Karin, I would like you to meet my wife. Hello. You are leaving? Oh, I'm coming back. Oh? Uh, unless you'd rather make it tomorrow. I would prefer that we continue tonight. 
All right, I'll see you later then. Goodbye. It is obvious she knew you were displeased. You did not tell her that you had a wife. Is it important? To me, yes. Tanya. You know the reason why this girl was chosen. She will be the hostage. The talisman must be given back to us. And then? She's of no further use. Oh, Armand, is this true? Tell me she means nothing to you. How can you doubt me? Did I not choose you? Go now. The talisman must be returned. What if the Englishman refuses? He will not refuse. But he is suspicious. He asks questions about it. Then we must ensure that his questions are not answered. You must watch. Go now, before she returns. Mmm, doesn't that look delicious, my good fiends? Frozen brains. <laughs> you know, when you have uh, good fiends over for the holidays, you have to cater to their needs. Let's just as our good fiend here, our zombie, he comes over every year about this time and enjoys the festivities, you know. So he, he has a very delicate Palette, as it were, you know, while the other kitties are running around looking for trick or treats, candy, and stuff to ruin their fillings and their their teeth, and you know, getting all those cavities. Hmm. Hmm. Anyway. Our good fiend of zombies always looking for a new treat. So I thought this year I would try a new recipe uh, from the old Streets and Geeks cookbook. It's a uh, frozen brain. Basically, just pr pry open the old cranial cap, plop out the uh, the gray matter that's inside, and then of course you just freeze it up. Mm -hmm. Now, let's see if I can't get it out. Whoa, it's very slippery, very slippery. You know, you have to be very careful. Mmm, quite delicious, too. Yes, anyway, you, you need to take something to, to kind of get it into smaller pieces, <laughs> as it were, you know. Because, you know, we don't want our guests to choke to death. So just simmer down there, simmer down there. I'm getting to it. Anyway, you take a nice little medium hammer like this, and, of course, it's very, it's very slippery. And uh, you just sort of tap it, kind of like uh, the cranial taps when they do lobotomies, you know. It's, it's, oh dear, oh dear. Yes, this is really, oh, yes, indeed. It's, oh, yes, oh, there we go. Oh, there's a tidbit. Oh, here, here. It's, it's a small taste, maybe. maybe you, you want the whole thing. Okay, hang on then. And let's see if we can't, you know, prize it. Mm. Oh, there's some more. Yes, okay, we'll, we'll put that in the in the bowl for you here. Hmm? Yes. Anyway, you know you have to be careful. It's it, you know it's it's very flyery, splintery with the ice shards flying everywhere. Hmm. Hmm. Quite delicious. Quite delicious. Hmm. Hmm. Especially when it starts warming up inside the palate, you can really taste that brainy, brainy feel. Anyway. So, oh yes, there, it, there, 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 there it is. It's getting lovely. Oh, oh yes, a good piece there. A very good, yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Oh, there we go. That's a fine sliver there. Anyway, uh, I'll be here. You go, my fiend. You can you can dig into that while I'm while I'm uh, working on the rest of this. Oh dear, I got blood all over my shirt and everything. Oh, there'll have to be the more wash in the morning. <laughs> anyway, oh dear, I think I'm hearing other trick or treaters outside. I think I'll give them some of this brain matter here frozen. I see how they might like it. And anyway, hope you enjoy the holiday festive seasons. Happy Halloween, everyone. <laughs> let's, let's see if I can't just, just give them some of this outside. I'm coming. I'm coming. Excuse me, sir. The book Talisman's The Power of Magic. It's not available. What do you mean, it's not available? Well, it's in our restricted section, sir. Well, is it impossible to have a look at it? Not today, sir, no. I'm afraid it's almost closing time. Oh, well. Well, thank you. 
Yes, sir. No smoking permitted. That's right, Bob. Hey, Bobby the Monster and Boris T. Buzzard. I hear you've been doing a show for 10 years now. Well, good for you. As anyone knows who's been doing a show, none of us do it for the money or the fame. We do it for the love. And you obviously have a lot of love because you're working hard out there on your show. And we really appreciate it out here. So, Bob and I, we salute you. Hello? Hello, may I speak to Miss Karen Steele, please? Yes. Hold on, will you? Karen! Miss Steele, telephone. Miss Steele? Telephone. Miss Steele? Telephone. Miss Steele, what? you're wanted on the telephone. Oh, it's much too early. Hello? I'm afraid Miss Steele isn't in. Oh, well, it's hard to say she comes and goes. Yes? Would you tell her Mr. Baxter called? My number's Chelsea 3131. Yes, thank you. Excuse me. Oh, sir, I'm terribly sorry, but the book Talisman's The Power of Magic. Yes. We don't have it, sir. Yesterday you said you had it. It's missing. We've looked everywhere. Missing? I've got a terrible suspicion that it's been stolen. As far as I know, it's the only copy in England. Well, if it does show up, will you put it aside for me? Yes, of course, sir. It's, it's extraordinary the interest in the archive these days. Yes. Well, if you do find it, call me, will you? Thanks. Thank you, sir. Yes, you called this morning. Yes, I gave her your message, Mr. Baxter. No, no, I'm afraid she isn't. It looks as if she's gone. Her clothes are all gone. No. Hello?
Gary, now you're ill. No, it's, it's nothing. It's gone now. But you're trembling. Perhaps if you rest. No, I, I'll be all right in a minute, really. You must take care, my dear. Your hand. It's so cold. Karen. No. Karen. No, please. No. Darling, you know what these girls are like. Completely irresponsible. No, not Karen. Hey, what is this? Don't tell me you and Karen. Well, what do you know? Now, be serious, Madeline. You're serious, and no mistake. And to think I brought you two together. The party was a success. This artist that was coming, did he show up? What? Oh, darling, to be perfectly honest, it got so mad, I don't know who was there and who wasn't. You don't know who he is or anything? Oh, sweetie, you know Chelsea. People come and people go. Oh, now, you mustn't get in a tiz. She'll turn up, I'm sure of it. Now, look, if you want that little talk, you know the villagers, Paul? I think it may be a bit late for talking, Madeline. Paul. Well, I'm... Uh... Glad you've decided to take us into your confidence at long last, Mr. Baxter. Well, I'm sorry, Inspector, but I had nothing to go on. Nothing tangible. And it took a girl's disappearance to stop you playing detective, eh? Well, this also may be just a hunch. I've no proof she's mixed up in all this. Well, you know, for a time, I thought that you were mixed up in it, whatever it is. Me? Dr. Kelsey. His death was no accident. He was murdered. Those two marks on his neck might have been a snake bite, but he didn't die of poisoning. That snake's venom had already been extracted. Well, that's funny. Miss Forrest, the girl who was drowned, and her brother Keith, they also had two marks on their necks. Did they, indeed? Now, look, Mr. Baxter, don't you think it's about time you told me everything, tangible and otherwise? <laughs> Hiya, Bobby. You know, I learned that little trick from Count Dracula. Of course, uh, that's nothing compared to what I picked up from Dracula's daughter. <laughs> Still haven't gotten rid of that. But hey, ten seasons in the bag. That's quite the Halloween treat. But, uh, I'm going to have to fly off now because... It seems that some of my Halloween tricks hasn't gone over very well with the locals. So, uh, in the meantime, keep up the good work, and we'll be watching. Hey, Bobby, it's your old pal Slash, and I just wanted to wish you and Boris a congratulations on your 10th season of being on the air. And my oldest pal in this crazy world of horror hosting. I am proud to be a part of it, and I am proud to call you my friend. So, congratulations again, Bobby, and happy Halloween! <coughs>
Karine. What are you doing here? Your girl, Karen. Yes? I know the reason why you have brought her here. Oh, you know. And what she means to you. You tell me that she is a hostage, that she's here to take my place. Oh! Please, I beg of you, send her away. Haven't I served you, carried out your every wish? And you will continue to do so. Please, send her away, get rid of her. Only when the talisman has been returned. That is not true. She is here to take my place. That is what you want. I know it. Silence! I must have the talisman by sunset tomorrow. Please. I beg of you, do not send me away. Go, I tell you. I am dismissed. Until I summon you again. When I was a youngster, I used to conjure up all sorts of faces, phantoms, demons and the like, just gazing into the fire. And as for making up ghost stories, <laughs> I could scare the living daylights out of myself sometimes. You should have been a writer. Mm -hmm. I know one thing. What you just told me beats any story I ever dreamed up, or read about for that matter. It's the truth, Inspector. That man who found the boy's body, and his wife, could you describe them to me? Yes, he was quite distinguished looking. Around 35 to 40. Dark. His wife was very attractive, kind of gypsyish. What was his name again? Moulier. Armand de Moulier. Yes, he was very charming. But I got the feeling it was affected. He was much too smooth. You know, what beats me is why Dr. Kelsey was killed. You sure you didn't tell anybody he was helping you? No. Not even Carrot Steele? No. Now I'm very worried about her, Inspector. Yeah, so I've gathered. Crazy, isn't it? You meet someone only once? Oh. Hey, you know, it's 1.30. Oh, sorry. Didn't realize it was so late. Shall I ring for a cab? No, thanks. The boat will do me good. And I'll take this ugly little brute along with me. Well, I must say, it's a change from the usual routine. I don't bother, I'll see myself out. Good night. Good night, Inspector. Hello? Yes, Madeline. Garan. I'll be right over. When I came home, the door was open, and there it was. Well, who could have brought it, and why? You tell me. The artist, maybe? Just a minute. Look. His signature? The serpent and the bat. The talisman. Talisman? 
Yes, a medallion I found the night Anne disappeared. I thought it might have something to do with her death, a clue. Paul, don't think me mad, but could this be some sort of a warning, a message, or... Karen's been kidnapped? The medallion is the ransom? Yes. Do you have it? No, no, I gave it to the police. The police? Are you mad? Madeline, what's the matter? Oh, you fool, don't you know what you've done? Well, what are you talking about? Karen, she's in danger if anything happens to her. Can't you see what you've done? You must get it back, somehow. I know how you feel, but I think I'll just take this along with me. But it may be too late. Get the medallion. Sorry, Madeline, but I've got to do this my way. Let me go. Devils of Darkness, eh? Count Sinister. Otherwise, Armand du Molière, born 1588. It's the same man, Inspector, but it's not possible. Well, I don't profess to know anything about reincarnation, and I certainly never believed in black magic until now. The raising of the dead, the ritual, it all fits. Yes, and his followers have started up over here now. Sarge, get out of Interpol. See if they've got anything on this Jim Moliere and on that village. Malin, the local police inspector. He must have known about this. Got that? Oh, and uh, post a couple of men outside, will you? Right. Inspector, if this picture was to scare me off, why this? Why this tip-off? I'd say somebody was stepping out of line by the look of things. Pity you disturbed them before they finished the message. The O. I wonder what that means. The only... The old something? Odd? The odd spot? Madeline's shop? Yes. Yes, I think we better have a few words with Miss Madeline Braun. Madeline Braun, is she here? I'm sorry. We're closed. Inspector Harwick, Scotland Yard. Is she upstairs? She's not here, I tell you. She's gone away. Well, we'll take a look up there anyway. Excuse me. Well, what's it all about? What's upstairs? Well, just an attic. Here, I'm not supposed to go up there. Aren't you? I don't know what you expect to find there. Never mind that. Open it. See? I told you. You know where she's gone? I don't know. To the country somewhere. The truck arrived yesterday morning. The truck? What for? 
pocket like a couple of coffins. She gets all kinds of antiques, you know. Inspector. Got that dough from France. They're on the same thing over there. That Inspector Malin character got arrested yesterday morning. And the whole crowd of them from the village. It's black magic, all right. They're on their way over here, some place called Ferndale. Well, there must be dozens of places called Ferndale. Did they say which one? No. By the way, seen this? What happened? Look. Cover it. It's in the East. He mustn't know. We can't tell him. Madeline, he mustn't find out. First the talisman. And now this fool. The girl is all he really wants. And Tanya? He wants Karen. He can have her. We'll offer her to him tonight. The sacrifice? The initiation will take place at midnight. <laughs> Karen, I want to give Karen a drink. Get out! Karen, why can't you be nice to me, Karen? Why can't you be kind to me, Karen? Leave her alone, you fool! What do you want to do that for? Not only beautiful, my dear, you are also very brave. 
as brave as I. Your followers, Master, they await you. Please, I would like to help. To get on to Malin, then. Remember the waiter? Plain clothes man. As soon as he nailed the inspector, the whole village opened up. Uh, it took them long enough. Well, fear can be a terrible thing, Mr. Baxter. And when you're monkeying with black magic, who knows what you're up against. Hey, Bobby. Hey, Boris the Buzzard, my special friend. Never mind that part. Anyway. Dear Bobby and Boris, we want to wish you a very happy congratulations on the season finale of your 10th, tenth, uh, 10th, tenth. Tenth year, that's one, two, three, four, oh wait, I gotta take my shoe off, wait a second. Put your shoe back on, nobody wants to see a werewolf foot. Okay. Congratulations, Bobby. Congratulations, Bobby and Boris, 10 years and still going. From Sluggo. The Vortex. And you Wolfie. Have to say your name. Wolfie. Good job. Wolfie. I'm, I'm Wolfie. Happy Halloween. Oh, Boris. Boris, it's okay. It's okay. Let me dot those tears away. You, I know. I told you. You can't put your heart into, into, uh, into one, one person. I guess you could say person. Yeah. Well, Oh, oh, anyway, it's, 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 it'll be all right. It'll be okay. You'll see. Everything works out all in its own time. <laughs> oh, I know. I know. I know. I know. Arise. Prepare the circle that binds you as one.
are we here? Go ahead. Ferndale Division reports Madeline Braun has country home about a mile from village. Edge of woods near cemetery. The old manor. End of message. Thank you very much. Out. The odd spot, the old manor. And it's near a cemetery. That's the place, all right. Come on. You, who follow the devil of darkness, pledge allegiance. We follow, O Master. We are your saints. We obey without question. In the name of our Lord Satan, do you acknowledge the powers of darkness? We do. We follow the orders of the sinister. The one who defiled the sacred talisman has been struck down. Get every available man. Sir. And hurry. Calling all cars in V Division. Calling all cars in V Division. Proceed to the old manor, Ferndale, immediately. Proceed to the old manor, Ferndale, immediately. Anyhow, this is Mr. Lobo, and we at Cinema Insomnia would like to wish Bobby Gamonster a happy 10 year anniversary. The next 10 years is going to be the Bobby Gamonster decade. So thank you so much for hanging in there and delivering Monster Movie Night for 10 years. And uh, we hope we get a lot more. Uh, we're big fans of Boris the Buzzer. Before you is the neophyte who shall be initiated into the order. Before you is the convert who will serve as high priestess and become my chosen bride. With her own blood, I will make the mark of the sacred talisman. You will awaken to find life everlasting. Inspector!
Greetings, my little hobgoblins. Mr. Molto here. You know, October not only brings Halloween, but it also brings something special. I want to congratulate Bobby Gamonster and Boris on their 10th season finale. That's right, 10th season. And I'm looking forward to another 10 years, Bobby. I know you'll be here. <laughs> and I know I'll be around. Happy Halloween. What a wonderful film, eh, my ghoulies? <laughs> it's a wonderful film for a wonderful time of year. Halloween. Also, our season finale 10. And, and all the wonderful things that's happened over the years, over the year past. And thank you all. You. That's right. You and you and you for coming back each and every episode, for making this season 10 exciting and scary and wonderful and spooky and all the creepiness that's in my bones and spines. Right, Boris? <laughs> we want to thank you all for, ha for celebrating this e illustrious event with us here at Gargoyle Manor, the Monster Museum. For monster movie night. I'm. Uh, Hank, hey, hey, what? Who are you? I am Zardak of the planet Zantar. Happy Halloween to you all. It is the one time on your Earth planet that I can come and be unobtrusive. That is, I can be who I am. Exactly. <laughs> I'm here because you, sir, Mr. Bobby Gum Monster, have not been airing the right kinds of science fiction films. You have only been playing the monster type, not the alien type from a planet far, far, far away in a galaxy far, far, far away. <laughs> so, I am here, and I'm going to take a hostage. That's right, a hostage, until you agree to my demands. You shall see who it will be now. I'm going to take your hench bird, Boris the Buzzard, along back to I, my galaxy, far, far, far away. And you will not see him until you play more sci-fi films of alien variety. And if you continue not to show these films as I have suggested, well, you get the idea. Scotty, beam us up. Two to beam up now, please. Happy Halloween. Oh, and happy season finale. Hey, hey, come back here. Hey, come back. Oh, my evilness. Oh, my evilness. Listen, listen. Wherever you went to with my my Boris, my dear Hinchbird, my companion, my pal for all these years, please, please, I'll do anything, anything. But I can't put on more sci-fi of aliens now. It's our season finale. I mean, we won't be back until January. Do you hear me out there? Boris, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Oh, what to do? What to do? First he gets jilted, and now this. Oh, what are we going to do? Oh, my fiends, you saw it, an alien from another planet beamed right here in our unliving room 
and took Boris away from me. You saw it. You were here. Just it happened just this moment. And now he wants he wants an ultimatum from me, Bobby the Monster. I am the monster here. How dare he? How dare he? Ah. Ah, I'll get you back, Boris. If it's the last thing I ever do, I'll get you back. And with I get a hold of that alien, oh, he'll wish he, he'll wish he had never come to this planet. Oh, you'll come back, won't you? For our season one of season episode one of season 11 starting in January. Don't you worry, my fiends. I'll rip the soul from his very marrow and bring Boris back here where he belongs. Hosting Monster Movie Night. Don't you worry. I'll happy Halloween, everyone. And until next year.